So today I'm going to give an update from the ocean science team about some really exciting progress we've made, largely motivated by uh, this knot project that we've been working on for a couple years. And so hopefully by the end of this talk, you'll understand why this uh, image of 10 spotters off the coast of Chesapeake Bay is so incredibly exciting to see. Um, and as a bit of a spoiler, those were thrown out of an airplane um, about uh, a week ago. So. I'll talk through kind of the progress and all of the efforts and, and failures along the way in order to arrive at having this uh, beautiful grid of, of buoys thrown out of an airplane. So where did we start? Um, this project, as we've kind of discussed um, inside so far for many years, really started uh, in 2021. So that was the beginning of the NOP Hurricane Coastal Impacts Project. Um, where NOP stands for the National Oceanographic Partnership Program. And that's a, a collaborative uh, group that funds these major projects trying to address um, really challenging problems. And this one is specifically targeted at improving our forecasting ability of uh, coastal impacts from hurricanes. And so, so far actually fits into this project um, for deploying uh, spotter buoys in order to get critical observations to improve these um, for forecasts of hurricanes. And so this slide gives some context on you know, the challenge at hand to arrive at that beautiful grid um, shown on the first slide. Specifically, um, traditionally when you deploy these larger buoys, you attach a parachute. However, parachutes are incredibly complex, expensive to rig, they require unique airplane coordination, so a static line deployment rather than just kind of throwing them out the door. And all it took was a quick uh, search through our drive of you know, parachute rigging instructions and I immediately found a, a 20 page document for rigging and a single parachute. But our goal is really to get high density coverage of these extreme events. And so when you need a 20 page document to rig you know, a single buoy, and that requires a lot of kind of manual intervention and attention, that's not going to scale. And so our goal in really kind of pushing the needle on deploying instruments for extreme events in a rapid response way is to not need parachutes. Of course, uh, we need to know, then know, can, can the spotter hit the water out of uh, an airplane at about 1,000 feet altitude going 150 miles an hour and be fine? And so the first test was kind of the beginning of 2022, the beginning of this year. Uh, we deployed several spotters out of, um, out of an airplane. And the, the video you can see here is actually from a, a 360 GoPro mounted to one of those spotters trying to understand the dynamics of the buoy as it was falling um, in order to kind of do a retrospective on what might go wrong and what could go wrong. And so what we saw in this test was actually kind of a mixed bag. Uh, as you can see in that figure of the spotter, the hole actually shattered on a couple of them. Uh, but on the flip side, three of them were healthy. And so while there were obviously kind of like failures associated with this, and this was not the type of performance we would want for throwing spotters out of an airplane, it also gave us a hint that there was a possible kind of landing or impact onto the water that could allow these spotters to, to remain healthy and survive. And so that kind of little seed of, of hope meant that it was kind of really worth iterating on um, stability of these spotters falling through the air and other aspects of the airdrop in order to improve um, the, the survivability of these, these buoys. And so in comes um, some arts and crafts, as we, as we termed it. And what you can see here is a really simple cardboard airfoil. And this is obviously um, you know, version zero of our prototype, where, uh, one, of our, where one of our really creative uh, engineers came up with a solution based on the hypothesis that the, the reason for these really inconsistent failures across buoys was actually due to um, a lack of stability as the buoy was falling. So it tumbling through the air and some of those buoys then you know, hitting on the, the surface rather than on the much more stable um, bottom of the buoy. And so the goal here was not actually to really slow the terminal velocity of the buoy per se, but just to make sure that when the buoy hit the water, 
it was hitting upright, where all of kind of the more delicate parts of the buoy, the solar panels, the, the plastic lid, um, were, were faced upright, and the, the bottom and the center of, um, the low center of mass was really kind of pointed downward. So what you can see is, is myself and, and Evan, um, our CTO, putting together our first prototypes, trying to see if we could really improve or move the needle on the survival rates of these spotter buoys. And what it is, is, is truly just um, five cardboard panels um, attached. And the goal here is also to make sure that we don't creep into the territory of parachutes again. The goal is, is simple and easy to deploy and also easy to manufacture. And so that's why kind of the, the bare bones um, practice here. And so after developing those, um, we were able with our partners at University of Washington to test four of those out the door. And so this is just a skydiving airplane where they were helpful enough to um, drop them for us and we could test. And what we saw was four out of four survive. Amazing. But that survival kind of comes with an asterisk. Um, while they were still able to report wave data, the spotter buoy actually reports a variety of other variables. So uh, sea surface temperature, barometric pressure, um, the solar panels are also connected via some, some cables as well that are critical. And so what we saw was that even though they survive and they kind of would uh, provide that minimum viable amount of data that we want, we could do better. Uh, we could make sure that these barometric sensors, barometric pressure sensors stay attached, that sort of thing. And so not back to the drawing board, we're definitely kind of moving the needle toward the right direction, um, but still more iteration in store. And so what we did was we got those four buoys back. We inspected um, each of those buoys to try and understand what were the failure mechanisms. Why are the sensors disconnecting? What's happening? And what we saw was that parts of the internal electronics box, um, when they're hitting the water from 1,000 feet at terminal velocity, uh, feel such a, a strong impact that there's some shattering. And as a result, that pulls the cables with it. So, Next at the drawing board was trying to understand how can we keep that shell from cracking and also how can we make sure those cables aren't so um, you know, liable to the failures of these plastic parts that are actually less critical overall. And so what we actually realized was that in those plastic parts there were um, unnecessary amounts of, of volume, these desiccant packs, that were really compacting a lot of the forces. And so the next test was increase some of the, the reinforcements, essentially hot glue or epoxy, make sure that everything is as tightly bound as possible, and then also remove some of these excess pieces that were inducing some, some forces that, that were clearly problematic for some of the, the holes. And so here we have another animation of, of just deploying those um, several more buoys. And once again, um, we're seeing some, some general progress. But of course, this is a live project trying to um, instrument for hurricanes. And hurricanes don't show up on a schedule. So kind of where we're at in this iteration cycle, we're, we're making progress. These buoys are surviving out the door, but we're not 100% confident that everything that we've modified is going to lead to instrument success. But regardless, uh, as we all remember, Hurricane Ian showed up at the end of September. And it was go time for the project to, um, with our collaborators at University of Washington, at Scripps, and at the Naval Research Laboratory um, Scientific Squadron, for them to deploy 10 of our buoys, along with a variety of other buoy types, um, out of their P3 in advance of this incoming hurricane. And so that animation you can see on the left is that cardboard airfoil in practice out there um, getting action. And so how the, how'd it go? Um, we had three perfect survival units, which was truly you know, a step up from where we started at the beginning of the year. We had four okay, so we lost things like temperature, lost things like barometric pressure. And then we had three failures, so they possibly hit the water and, and lost power or some sort of critical failure along those lines. Performing in this kind of rapid response way, difficult to get those buoys back. And so trying to understand what went wrong, we really had to dig into kind of what the data looked like. But even with those, some of those failures and even intermittent dropouts of um, the additional sensors, 
we actually saw incredible success associated with this. So one of those spotter buoys um, ended up being right in the path of Hurricane Ian. And so it's shown on the right is the weather radar. So the real time weather radar, no kind of estimates from a model of Hurricane Ian. You can so clearly see the eye and that gold pentagon is uh, one of those spotter buoys as it passed essentially right under the eye wall of Hurricane Ian on the morning of, of September 28th. And so this buoy happened to be a, a superstar and it's sea surface temperature, barometric pressure, all of its sensors uh, performed perfectly. And what we see is just an incredible drop in barometric pressure observed by this spotter buoy, which is uh, you know, on its own incredibly interesting, but also is an observation that's really valuable for understanding how well our models are performing because really capturing the, the low pressure center of a storm is critical to its overall intensity and also understanding whether it's um, modeled and forecasted in the right location. So whether that track is right. We also see weight heights um, up to about 12 meters, which is uh, pretty wild for that proximity to land and is also a really important observation to get as we're trying to understand coastal impacts. and. The things that really impact coasts are storm surge and increased wave heights, as that is what will ultimately cause damage to the infrastructure. And so capturing these observations um, proved really critical to this project so that the modelers can go back and um, assess how their, how their models performed and also kind of iterate on what the, the best configurations and advances are. But back... <laughs> Back in the so far mind um, is back to the drawing boards. So we had you know great success with Ian, but at the same time there's three that disappeared, and if that means there's kind of room for more improvement. And um, looking at a lot of the data that came in, we saw that likely the cables, which are also critical to providing power to those buoys, and without power we're not going to get satellite connection, and we're never going to get any data. That when those buoys hit the water, um, those cables likely rip out. And that is likely very important um, in terms of causing these failures. And so really what we did was, you know, we know the, the cardboard airfoil seems to really be working, seems to be um, increasing the stability of the fall really well. And if we can just get those cables to be as strong as possible. And so what we see here is more hot glue, which ultimately, you know, is in a prototyping sense really effective but it really is kind of the, the long-term direction of something like an epoxy over these like weak regions, which is also very traditional in um, the development of deployables like this. And so after that kind of final iteration, we finally get back to that first figure. So we have those 10 spotters in this really um, nicely aligned grid and actually a really interesting location. So right next to the Gulf Stream where um, the color map corresponds to currents. And then on the left, we have that deployment from the P3 again. And so instead of you know plus or minus a couple buoys um, reporting in, some losing instruments, we actually saw all 10 report in, all 10 provide um, sea surface temperature, barometric pressure, everything that it, they were expected to and also for all the solar panels to stay connected. So that means that we can drop these in a rapid response fashion, get that data in the short term, that's really critical. And then these buoys continue to drift out and join the rest of the SOFAR global grid and contribute to those daily hourly updates that are critical to our, our global observing network and global forecasting network. And so what's shown here is, is really exciting because every buoy is covered by or is colored by the sea surface temperature that it was observing. So when, um, when it's a warmer color corresponds to warmer sea surface temperature and the color map underneath is also the um, modeled sea surface temperature. And so now you can see we're really getting really valuable information about the location of the Gulf Stream, which is really critical in driving all sorts of weather phenomenon as well. And so that's kind of the end-to-end the -end of how do we go from having a, a project and really setting the bar really high, where the bar is, you know, get rid of the traditional way of deploying using parachutes. And we want to do that because we want to be able to instrument extreme events at a high density as agilely and, and rapidly as possible. And so to get rid of the parachute, we obviously had to break a couple of spotters along the way. Um, but 
over the course of a year, managed to, with obviously major contributions across mechanical engineering, firmware, production, operations, um, we were able to arrive at kind of a solution that was both really tractable in terms of um, production time and um, cost of materials and ease of deployment that's also incredibly effective in, in buoy survival. And so we're, we're really excited for, for next year um, when this project continues, hoping to respond to as many kind of important hurricanes um, as, as come up.